Hi, we're here live in Toronto, behind the Much Music City building, awaiting this monumental event, people. This pattern was a fun anti-game show game show. As much a parody of a game show as a game show itself. What is the norm? And how were we going to make fun of the norm? It was ridiculous. We all go, what are we doing? Very messy, very cheap. The show was just so different than anything else. But it was insanity. This is insanity. I was just drawn to it. Test Pattern was a college game that was developed by Insight Productions and Dan Gallagher. And he did them at universities. And they were just silly games. A whole testing process on college campuses to make sure that when we finally went to TV, we had it right. The show was broken into three parts. The first part, we had a game board made out of what looked like television squares. You had to throw these fake bricks to break the fake TV set. We had this wheel of death kind of thing where a contestant would lie down on the wheel. And we'd spin them around. We had it painted green so we could superimpose whatever we wanted. Nothing funnier than seeing a half nauseous person on their back spinning around making noises as it looks like they're spinning it down a toilet. They could win spinner winner. What'd they get? A two slice toaster and they'd go crazy. The prizes were, were, were junk. You're no prize yourself. Might as well play it up and have fun with it. The man in the wheel is going back to Barry with something precious. A brand new two slice toaster, Howie! There you go! We would then ask them questions based on various silly things. Do you have a pet cat when you were young? I helped develop this helmet with a light bulb on top. And you had to smack your melon and say, it's my turn. That was the level of comedy we aspired to. Dan Gallagher was a great front person. He was larger than life. Literally and figuratively. Danny had that blue collar appeal. People would see Dan and they would reach over to shake his hand. Camacho as a big guy. He had long hair. He had a big booming voice. You got it! Give the boy! Beautiful! We put him in really outrageous outfits. Custom made suits, the loudest brashest things you've ever seen. He was like a glam rock star hosting a game show. Dan was a very, very bright guy and very smart in television. He hadn't had a lot of TV experience, but he knew what was right. Dan was the center of all the chaos. There were shows we shot that like, they ended and were like, oh my God, that was just the worst. And he's like, no, it's fine. And, and you see, because he's, he's kibitzing with the contestants, he had a knack of figuring out what was going on. Labatt's were our sponsors, and you know, I was the first person that had convinced Labatt's that they had a much broader audience than just sports. A whole audience that loves rock and roll, and you're not playing to them. We were really directing the comedy and the game towards a very specific demographic. There was a comedic sensibility behind it that was more, I don't want to sound too grandiose, but you know, like Andy Kaufman. I could always imagine some of our fan base getting really high and kind of going, oh my God, what are they going to do next? I'm not saying that that was part of the creative process, but maybe it was. It was the golden age of David Letterman, who broke all the rules with TV, as he had his writing staff come out and deliver lines badly. Everybody who worked on the show was in the show. It was very loosey-goosey. We didn't have any rules. There might have been sort of one rule, quite simply, no assholes allowed. A camera person would make a suggestion, and we'd try to incorporate it. We couldn't afford to hire outdoor actors and other people, so literally, if you were a writer on the show, we could just throw you into a, being a character. Who is my lovable sidekick on Test Pattern? The lovable sidekick is Luciano Casmiri. Hey! Hey! A terrific writer, Lou Kachmiri, worked on the program, and he created a character called the Harry Back Brothers, and he had a particularly hairy back. He and Franklin were the Harry Back Brothers. We went out there just wearing bathing suits with our back to the audience and a number of stickers on our back. And people had to pull off different things from their back to find out if they got points. You're supposed to put a little Vaseline so it doesn't stick so much. It's like, okay, Frank, here it comes, and Dan would just rip it off and this was my first job in television. Lutz played a number of characters. 
grotesque characters. Get up close and take a sniff of Pablo's, Pablo's hand. He was Aunt Ilya. So he'd come out in drag with a giant hairy mole. One of the penalties on the show for doing something wrong was you had to kiss Aunt Ilya's hairy mole. It was rather gross where we put this mole on his face with little hair sticking out of it. We experimented with things that were outrageous. So we'd create these games. One in particular I will never forget. Uh, it was for our Thanksgiving show. It was the most disgusting idea. It was put the egg back in the turkey. I can't believe we're, you know, trying to put an egg up a turkey's cloaca. A little trivia about our course. Ironically, the cloaca is where the egg would normally exit the body. <laughs> Putting an egg up a turkey's ass, I mean, where'd you come up with that? I think it's very funny. The wilder and crazier we got, the more and more the fans seemed to love it. The show really became an underground hit. We really had a rabid fan base, and they'd show up in droves to get in, so we'd have to turn people away. We were twice featured on Entertainment Tonight as interesting and different game shows from around the world. It was very exciting when we started getting some notifications from people in the international press who kind of said, you guys should check out this show in Canada. They played three times a day, five days a week. The repeat value was amazing, which was part of the downfall because... It was pretty edgy. I don't write these questions, I just ask them. What Olympic sport features men competing without cocks? That's COX. <laughs> Didn't really apply to earlier time slots in a day and beer advertising as well as an issue. Labatt was all over it. We got some comments that it was playing at a too early time for younger kids. It seemed to end with this sense of success. Instead of running it out, we kind of left when it was still really on the top of its game. Test pattern finished, and Dan went on to other stuff, and Insight went on to other, other things, and I went on to other things. Dan wanted to be a star. Pretty soon thereafter, he was hosting Video Countdown on Much Music. He became a VJ. I remember when I uh, got the news, uh, I just about fell over. Dan uh, died. And uh, it broke my heart. He died way, 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 way too young. He was uh, an incredibly talented, generous, lovable guy. And a big loss for television. I have no doubt that, you know, if he would have stuck around, that he'd be still on the air regularly on television. We managed to sell the show to a cable channel that wanted to buy all 195 episodes, and I really thought that it was appropriate that the proceeds that we got from selling the program be passed on to his family. And that money went to Dan's mother. There's a group of us that remain Danny's friends. We always have a glass of something on the day that he passed away and remember some of the good memories. <sighs> Maybe the best time of my life. It was, it was just amazing. Youth is crazy. We were all ambitious. We felt we'd done something really cool and really special. I kept reminding people at the time that you will never have this freedom again in your entire career. I still think it's one of the most inventive television shows, game show or not, that was on TV and it was, I believe, ahead of its time.